morning, five o'clock in the end, time for another morning run. After it, I'm going to talk to you about my week and my lunch. I'll see you after the run. Run done. Uh, let's talk about my week from last week. Monday, 8.53 k's at 5.78. Tuesday, 8.05 at 5.36. Wednesday, 6.02 at 6.14. Thursday, workout with the group, 8.8 k's at 4.16. Friday, 8.29 at 5.26. Saturday, long run, 17.04 k's at 5.25. Sunday, 8.44, 5.26. Total mileage for the week, 65 k's. Down two from the previous week, but added that extra stress of the Thursday morning workout in. Long run hydration was good this week. It helps that it was a couple of degrees cooler during the time that I was out. I felt a lot better. I managed to get an extra 500 mils in before I went. Found it a lot easier to rehydrate afterwards. Still looking into daily supplements. Um, I think I've found one that I'm going to test out next week. I'm going to go and have a shower, and then I'll get on with the uh, watch chat. So let's talk watches. Mine, unlike just about everybody else in Australia who owns a GPS watch, is not a Garmin, it's a Coros. Coros is a relative newcomer to the Australian market and to the GPS watch game, but they're doing some pretty amazing things. And I thought I'd just share with you my experience after owning this thing for 12 months. In case you're someone who's like me, who has used a Garmin or another watch brand for a while and they're ready to upgrade, but they're not quite sure what they want to use next. Why would someone go out and buy a Coros over, say, a Garmin or a Polar or a Sunto? Well, for starters, here in Australia, they're sort of Garmin or nothing. I know very few people who have a Polar watch. Sunto basically has no presence here in the country. Other than that, it's, yeah, it's Garmin's all the way. So I was really, really surprised when I was researching to upgrade my uh, GPS watch 12 months ago, and I noticed that there was this Coros Pace 2 around, and when I compared it to the Garmin 245, which was the watch that I was looking at, I noticed that this thing had a hell of a lot more features, and its recommended retail price was $200 cheaper. Now, the Garmin on special you can get for around $350. This retails at $320. So I got this at about $280. Bucks. You cannot get another GPS watch here in Australia cheaper that does anywhere near what this does. To start off, this is my experience with the watch. I'm not going to go too deep into the tech specs and what you can do with it. If you want to see that, click the link down below. There's a guy, Matt Legrand, he makes great videos. Um, he goes through all the tech specs with this thing and yeah, does a really good job of it. I'm not going to make another one of those videos. I'm going to tell you about what it's like to own this thing for 12 months. So let's start with the positives. First one, and this is a big one, battery life. The battery life is awesome. I usually get over two weeks out of a single charge. I use it about an hour a day for GPS and then it's just regular use otherwise. My old um, Garmin 735, I was charging that every four to five days. Other positives, the app's easy to use. Um, you can plan workouts in it. Um, they've now just released an online desktop uh, functionality. I haven't looked into it that much because I tend to just use my phone to get all the information. There isn't any extra functionality um, available in the online stuff yet, but I'm sure that that's where they're going with it. The other big positive is that that's the bang for the buck. You know, I think the closest thing is the Garmin 4Runner 55 which has none of the more advanced metrics that this thing has. It has none of the um, triathlon specific options, none of the bike stuff, the list goes on. So there's some of the positives. There's other positives about it as well. The, the biggest one being, it just works. Like, you know, realistically, 90% of runners want a watch that tells them how fast they're going, tells them what their heart rate is, and then uploads automatically to Strava so they can get that sweet, sweet kudos. It does all of that. Let's talk about a few of the negatives. This is a bit of a preference thing. If you've got an Apple Watch and you're used to using an Apple Watch, you may not notice this so much, but it's the little scroll wheel. It's how they use it. So I'll try and get it nice and close. So they've only got the two buttons on here. 
they've got the scroll wheel, which is that one, you know, it's a little lock come up, or they've got their lap sort of reset button. So the scroll wheel, you gotta turn it a few times to get it to work, and then you can flick through different menu items. Okay, based on what's on there. Um, and then you can press it as well to go in deeper. So it's it's a fairly simple menu system when you're using it day to day, and it works really, really well. But then when you're in a workout and you wanna to go to the next screen, that's annoying as hell. You've gotta flick this a couple of times to get it unlocked. Then you've gotta flick through to the screen you want, but not flick too far when you're using a Garmin. They've got the two buttons up and down, you know which button to press. You press it, it goes to that next screen, and you're all set, it's day to day, it works probably better than buttons but in a workout when you're running it's not that great my second negative is the way that it measures pace when you're doing a pace interval i used a garmin watch for eight years 2013 to start of last year so i was used to how they work set intervals all based on average pace this thing uses more of an instantaneous pace. I think it's the last five seconds pace. So it just fluctuates that a little bit more. I find it a little bit hard to maintain a constant pace using this. That being said, I'm pretty much used to it now. It's neither here nor there, but it was just a little annoyance when I was getting used to it. Third negative, and this one's a big one if you're an open water swimmer. If you're an open water swimmer, I would not buy this watch. GPS accuracy in open water swimming is terrible. I've done one open water swim with this thing. It was an Ironman event. Supposed to be a 1.8k swim. I think it told me that I did 2.2k's. It lost me so many times in that swim. It was ridiculous. So the the GPS accuracy in open water swimming just isn't there. But if you're like me and using it for the occasional triathlon, you're not really that worried about your open water swimming capability. The last negative, and this is probably my biggest one, is the workout screen. Now. I plan all my workouts ahead in the watch so that it just beeps and it tells me what to do next. I love that. I love that functionality about this. I loved it about garments. But so there's one key problem with doing that on a chorus. And chorus, if you're watching, please, please fix this. I don't know anyone who is happy about this situation. I can set whatever I want on six different screens on this thing. So I can set up my workout screen to show whatever information I wanted to show. If I wanted to see time of day, I've got a time of day screen. If I wanted to set my pace, my heart rate, uh, my kilometers, and I don't know, my cadence or whatever, I can put that on the screen. Unfortunately though, whenever I do a workout, every time it changes to a new lap, Coros have decided what sort of screen they want to put on there. And that's what comes up first. No matter what I had it on, no matter what I set it up on, it flicks back to this screen of their choosing. And that's really, really frustrating because if I want to get to the screen that I want to see that has all the metrics that I want to see, I have to do this stupid flicky thing, unlock it, then flick it to the next screen. And that's really fumbly and fiddly and hard to do. So I don't end up seeing what I want to see on the screen. The other thing too, adding to that is at the end of every rep, it doesn't give you a rep summary. All it needs to do is flick up on the screen for two seconds. It's not a deal breaker, but it is pretty bloody annoying. So, Koros, if you could fix that, that would be really, really helpful. But the verdict, is this a good watch to buy? Well, hands down, yes it is. Really, really light, um, great battery life, and does everything you want a GPS watch to do. It's got that one little bugbear um, about the screen that annoys me, but I can live with it. And considering the price difference between this and a and an equivalent Garmin alternative that isn't even actually equal to this. I, it's a no-brainer in my opinion. This thing is the watch of the future. Elliot Kipchoge agrees with me and he's, you know, okay at running. If you're in the market for a new watch, about 300 bucks, this is the one I'd go for. If you're in the market for another watch, I would definitely compare to their other options, the Vertex and the Apex. And like, if you've got that bit more money to spend, have a look at their other options because it's not that hard to change over brands and as far as i'm concerned this thing's beating garmin hands down in a lot of ways thank you for watching if you've got any questions please put them down below in the comments i'll definitely answer i don't get that many comments so you know i have time to answer so make sure you ask them um, if you like the video give it a thumbs up uh, consider subscribing and otherwise i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching bye